So the one and only Javante Tang Davis, who is fighting Lamar Roach in Houston, Texas on December 14th, he responded to a fan who told him, you will never become undisputed champion at 135 like your daddy, Devin. Tank clapped back with, quote, and your boy will never be mentally stable again. End of the quote. This is not Javante first time stating that he believes Devin will never be the same after Ryan cheated him by taking PEDs and obviously missing weight. But the important part was Ryan taking PEDs. This is why it was essential for Devin Haney to sue Ryan Garcia. Because ultimately, just like Javante said, we don't know if Devin Haney is ever going to be the same again. After all, Ryan Garcia cheated in a sport where you can physically kill your opponent. So it remains to be seen if Devin Haney is going to be able to bounce back the same. Javante doesn't believe so. Due to that, that makes Devin Haney's lawsuit against Ryan Garcia more effective. Devin Haney pretty much missed out on the biggest fight in the sport of boxing due to Ryan Garcia cheating him. Because right before the Ryan Garcia fight, the biggest fight in the sport of boxing was Devin Haney versus Javante Tank Davis. That's the fight everyone kept talking about, and that's the fight everyone wanted to see. However, due to Ryan cheating Devin, Ryan completely sabotaged the Tank fight for Devin Haney. He completely ruined the fight for Devin Haney. Now, Devin is missing out on the Javante Tank Davis payday. I mean, it don't take a genius to figure out that Ryan got Devin Haney off track of the Javante Tank Davis fight, which was the biggest fight in boxing. And that's going to hurt Ryan Garcia in court. Ultimately, Ryan Garcia has a lot to deal with when it comes to this lawsuit. He can get hit left and right with Devin Haney mentally, physically, and financially getting damaged due to Ryan cheating him. Ultimately, Ryan Garcia is screwed. He's going to be forced to pay Devin Haney a pretty penny. And when I say a pretty penny, I'm talking about that number can go up to 100 million in damages. For the people that don't know, Ryan already pleaded guilty to cheating by taking PEDs against Devin Haney. So all Devin Haney have to do now is show and prove the damages he received from Ryan cheating him financially, status wise and health wise which that's not hard to do. In fact, Javante just helped Devin Haney out because he came out stating that he may never fight Devin Haney due to the fact that Devin may never be the same. Well, that's just more bad news for Ryan. That's what Ryan Garcia has to deal with. I told you guys before, Devin Haney suing Ryan Garcia is for the greater good in the sport of boxing. This is gonna change the landscape of the sport. By protecting all of the athletes, all of the fighters that's fighting in the sport even more. So all of the athletes that's fighting in the sport of boxing who are clean should thank Devin Haney. What this is ultimately going to do is give the cheaters something to think about. That there are consequences to cheating in the sport. You can't just cheat and get a slap on the wrist like fighters usually do. This is going to change now. If Devin Haney is successful against Ryan Garcia, cheaters now have more consequences to face if they do cheat, or at least if they get caught cheating. The consequences is not just a suspension. Now it's a lawsuit where fighters can lose money as well. And without a doubt, that will discourage a lot of cheaters from cheating. You cheat, you get a suspension, you get a fine of over a million, and then even your win gets overturned to a no contest or an L. To make matters worse, you end up receiving a lawsuit after that. Therefore, that should discourage a lot of cheaters from cheating. If Ryan had gotten away with what he did, man, that would have had promoted cheating in the sport of boxing on a whole nother level. With that being said, go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you guys believe Devin Haney will be back the same like he never left or he will never be the same like tank believes subscribe below and to be continue on the next episode of akhi tv peace out wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh
Hey, hey Tank, you said that these dudes still got to huh? see you after after uh, Devin fight. Of course. Were you talking about Devin when you say that? Do you still want to fight Devin? Tell him I ain't want to fight him. No, he said he retired, right? Do you think that will be lasting damage to Devin Haney? What happened against Ryan Garcia? Yeah. Yeah. Tank, right? We're going to walk you out, Tank. What's up, bro? My neck, come over here, bro. That's the question I was wondering. He's a snake in a suit. That's all. He's a snake in a suit. Bro, he let, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Connor Ben. Connor Ben test positive and was still going to let him fight. Still was going to let him fight. Dillian Wyatt fought after he tested. Who? Dillian Wyatt, a heavyweight. Dillian Wyatt. At the test of positive, he, he see, fought. I didn't even know that. Bro, he's a snake, bro. Hey, Tank. He's bad for Would you fight Connor hey. Ben? Yes, if he off that shit. Hey, hey, so hey, so Tank. Hey, Tank. Hey, Tank. Huh? On an Eddie Hearn show? No, because I, I can't trust Eddie Hearn. You can't trust Eddie Hearn. You can't at all. Hey, snake in the shoe. Hey, Tank, right, right. How can we stand with Ryan Garcia with the fail test? See, another thing. I, you know why I'm back in around? Because a lot of boxers are going at him. Yeah. Which, when we fought, we made it cool, not saying like, but we made it cool to go at Ryan like that. Ryan is not somebody that, that, that he really like competition, you know? So for people to like go at him, I feel as though, and you see how serious they, why didn't it take 30, I mean, um, 72 hours for the test to come back, right? Came back after the Right. So why didn't it come out? That Tuesday or that week next, they waited to Canelo fight to um, to push that he had something in his drug. Then once they pushed that, Devin and them was on ESPN that night promoting that he he was it's all it's all in. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Hey Tank, Brian said Brian said that you drained him, and the version that fought Devin would beat you easily. He also said, Bro, "Go look at Ryan fight and go. I mean, go look at Ryan versus Devin, and go look at my fight versus De I mean, uh, versus Ryan. And you can tell that Ryan didn't even look no different. If, if he looked any different, he probably looked the worse. He just was a bigger, a bigger person, much slower. If he was on anything, why he didn't have strength at all his like every punch, the brick hand, the jab, everything would have been strong." He only hit him with the same punch I told everybody, a hook, a hook, a hook, which is Devin was sitting right there to get caught with the hook. And they talk about this guy, uh, my bad, talk about this guy, uh, uh, whatever, pound for pound or that's Come on. Bill and Eddie. Yo, Tink, yo, Tink, they say it's going to be A. They say it's going to be different, bro. They, they, they say you quote-unquote fighting a black fight or not. What you say about that, bro? Right. Which is what they say about that. Here's the way it works, and I'm sure uh, Chris also understands it because Chris partially explained this to me as well. Here's how it works when you're microdosing. So you 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 bigger dose off season, which is not when there's no fights and nobody's getting tested because boxing is the wild west and doesn't test in between fights. Yeah. And then you're microdosing in during camp, and when you're microdosing, it is trapped in the fat and therefore not going into your bloodstream, so therefore it's harder to catch you. When a fighter struggles to make weight, sometimes they're losing all that fat, and you get a little bit of tricklage coming out of the fat, and the drugs will some, come out in small spurts. That's why they're always caught in small doses, and people, the, the, the moronic part of the population will say, oh, that's not enough to help him. No, that's just the part that finally leaked. It's the leftovers. Out. Yes, and, and because they struggle in weight, which is also a typical thing when you start to think about it, why guys keep moving up in weight. So there's less struggles when they're doping to make weight, and therefore they keep moving up in weight and keep showing no signs of weakening and no signs of aging and no signs of, we don't have to name names. The box is right with it, you know? But, but nonetheless, <laughs> now it, it, when I started to learn this part, because every single time a guy fails, I'm always asking questions and I'm always learning a little bit more. And this time, when it came to this microdosing situation, it's a big way to beat even the random drug tests because it's not going to show up unless you're really draining yourself. So therefore, it makes sense why guys keep moving up in weight. So Ryan was struggling to make the weight, and he failed right at the end. But he passed in the middle of camp. 
This kind of explanation is an explanation worth looking into when it comes to his failed B test, B sample. Um, as for the lawyers, they're going to play lawyer and they're going to they're manipulate it as much as possible and mention that he passed those tests in the middle of camp. Well, I just explained to you in the method that microdosing work why he would have passed the tests in the middle of camp but failed at the very end. Because at the very end was when he was drained. Remember, he struggled to make weight. He was drained and therefore the substances start coming out. Which is also explains why he now, he's now talking about fighting at welterweight, junior middleweight, super middleweight against Benavidez. You also get a little bit of sense of why he would do that as well if this is the case. So once you know how the science of it works, you start to really put things together. You can reach your own conclusions. If you want to be a groupie, you can and reach no conclusions. But I'm the person <laughs> who's going to keep thinking about and, and keep thinking about not just fighters now, like Ryan, but also fighters in the past, fighters that have failed, fighters that have not failed, and so on and so forth. Really puts a, a, a light bulb over the situation.